Hello everyone, and welcome to the Isle of Doubt. My name is Elijah Chapman, and I was the team lead for Team Broccoli. Uh, team members include Joshua Callan, Rarlo Taylor, and Mario Arietta Crespo. Today we'd like to introduce you to the level that we built for our world building class in the game design program at Full Sail University. Uh, each of us has designed a unique and distinct area within this level, and uh, now we're going to have everyone come through and introduce their individual work to you. Thank you very much, and please enjoy. This is Josh Callan, and we'll be reviewing Isle of the Doubt for Team Broccoli, and this is the first section that the player encounters, the jungle. Um, they're first displayed with uh, the message up in the top right corner, finally made it to the island, but it's almost dark. I better hurry to find the labs. This gives the player some direction. Um, first come up to this campsite, and there's a couple of collectibles here for the player, and they can see that it's uh, rations and some tools. Uh, and they come up to this first barrier, and it's the first resistance on my section, and if they decide to not go this way, they'll find some other rations that were stored behind them. And if they continue on down the beach, a torch and another ration, and a particle effect that'll draw their attention, and they'll see that it's a stack of money which is the rare collectible uh, across our map. And when they try to get through this barrier, they just have to lift the boards out of the brackets there. And if they remove just one, the lower one, the player can then crouch underneath, and if it's the higher one, they can jump over. Uh, so coming through the fence, they can see another particle effect, and it looks like some more tools up there. And if they haven't noticed yet, it mentions in the message up above that there's lots of hidden rations around here, uh, and to keep their eyes open. So as they continue along the path here, trying to figure out how to get up to the tools, they'll see a, a path of wood logs and rocks that seem to make a path for them to jump up. So we head up this way. find the second set of tools. And then hopefully they see this lab door over here, and they head over here, and they get the message that the lab is over there, but it looks like they can't through, get through this way. Best to keep moving. Another ration there to draw them in close to the door to get that message. As they continue on, there's another door, but with a uh, particle effect on this one. Sparks to give the player the indication that the door is not working, and the message displayed. But the door does not work, and then you find tools to fix it to get it open. Uh, so the only path left to go is towards this waterfall here, and uh, treat it that they have to crouch under. And then they're faced with this uh, jump puzzle, a bit of platforming for the player. the final tool, and it displays the message that looks like I'm finished here, better head into that village, which is through that fixed lab door. And then uh, another hidden money here. And should fix and get rid of the door, and we'll be... Alright, Elijah Chapman here, and welcome to the village. Uh, the player, having just entered from the jungle, is going to come in and walk along this lighted path. Uh, the first thing they're going to see as they come in is this building being propped up on logs. Now, the story goes that the village was hit by a tidal wave, there's been some significant damage done, and one of the interesting after effects of that is that the player will then be able to interact with these buildings in ways that they might not otherwise expect. Okay, so we're going to knock down the building, get the shelves out of the way, and come inside. Now, the purpose of this area uh, is for the player to collect these zipline parts. Okay, uh, they pick up just like everything else. 
and the player is also attempting to grab crates as they come through, and I'm going to show you why just in a second. Uh, as we approach this platform here, um, we can see that there's this large wooden structure um, with a line running from the top of it to a pole across the opposite side of the fence. If we approach it, we can see that there's a bay between here, uh, and this is inaccessible to the player. So the only way the player is going to be able to get across to the next area is by using the zip line. How are they going to do that? Well, um, they're going to find these crates, uh, which I have uh, added in some uh, symbols to show the player where they're meant to go. They snap in position. So for each crate that the player finds, they just put it in position right there. And eventually, after they have gathered enough crates, they will have created a staircase, allowing them to access uh, parts of the upper part of the structure. Okay. So the first thing that the player is going to do after they complete the first four steps is they'll be given access to the top of this building. Now the reason this is important is because this door is locked, it's inaccessible, there's no way for the player to get in. Uh, and so in order to reach the inside of that building, the player has to first complete these steps and come up and come across the bridge and drop down. We'll see we found another conveniently located crate. Let's take that with us. Pick up the next set of zipline parts and grab any other pickups along the way that we can find. Okay, and now being on the inside we can see why the door was unable to be opened. It's been barred from the inside, so we just remove that bar, knock the door open with our crate, and off we go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and continue placing these crates to finish up our staircase. It seems like we're still missing one, so let's go locate that. There we go. Hiding in the rafters inside one of the houses. Alright, and as we're bringing that out, we've got our final zip line part sitting down on the dock. So, we can see on the left side of our screen that the heads up display is notifying the player that the zip line parts have all been collected. Uh, and we've got several messages being given to the player along the way. So the player reaches the top of the platform, they have all their zipline parts, there's this conveniently located floating cash drop indicating that pl the player is meant to jump, and the player jumps, and they're off to the next area. Alright, so that's Elijah Chapman closing off the village. Uh, here comes Mario Crespo introducing the Ziggurat. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is the Sierra, and at uh, this level will be four walk through of the whole level, and when they get to this place up here, they'll just walk down here, and first thing they'll notice is this ramp, they'll come up here, they'll see a little pickup here, and it has a, it looks like a diamond of some sort that was left here. And this whole place has been kind of destroyed. And after you get that uh, pickup, you'll be able to move on. Um, there might be another pickup. Oh, there's one right there. When you pick that one up, you can also move on to the next uh, spot over here. Uh, there'll be some boxes, and so notice that they can pick it up, move them around, and there'll be a uh, small crack here, careful with the spike trap, because it pushes you back, um, get this artifact piece, we'll all go in around it, uh, and crouch again, to get out, uh, there's another piece over here, there's also some money, so this has got, uh, so you pick that up, what up, there's a box here, when you move it, there's another piece, and now you got two of the four to open this door over here. In order to open the door, you need to fill like all the pieces and it'll open after you do that. Uh, you have to crouch here and then there'll be a box here that you can move around. You got get that out of the way so you can move around the 
spike threat. Collect that piece. And might as well move this out of the way here. And then you crouch again to get out. Move around. And you'll see this uh oh there's a staircase here. And there's a little message up there that notifies the player that there is going to be a way to get up there by using some of these crates that you find. So the main thing to do is get more of these crates and just come over here and kind of stack them up so that you can get jump on top of them and then get on top of the pillar that is up there. Uh, first we want to put, put the big one down that way you don't have problems later on because you might not fit again. Move these things out of the way. Put this one here and move that one there. Uh, put this on top of here. And then find another one. Put over here. We grab this one. Go ahead and slowly go over here. And we place it up on top of that. And go try to get up here. And notice that you can get up here and then you got it. Okay. Now all that's missing is the last piece of the artifact. So you can open the door. Which is in this room right over here. There you go. And now that all the artifact pieces are collected, you can go ahead and get out of the cigarette by getting up this spiral staircase that's that's been really old and it's been kind of tricky to get up, uh, on top of so they have to crouch in order to not get uh, not be uh, not to fall off the crouching helps them get up to the top and moves a little bit slower so that they don't actually make the wrong step and after that we'll make it to the top we'll turn around here and this is the exit so you will climb down here and there's more uh, more collectibles over here there's a pickup over here by the between these bushes. It's kind of hidden well, so the player might not see it too well, but uh, it's very clear with the bushes will attract your attention. Also, this ramp here will point out that there's a little collectible over here. You can uh, see that there's going to be another collectible over here by these bushes right there and go like that you got all the diamonds and you can move on to the next area hello everyone my name is Rollo Taylor from Team Property and today we're going to be doing a walk through the final stage in the Isle of Doubt Research Center let's get started when we first enter the Research Center we notice a bunch of things first thing we notice there's a bunch of debris all over the place second thing we notice there's a dent We'll go to the vent and see if we open it somehow. Walking to the vent, it tells us, and I mentioned about that the vent can't be open, but we first gotta put the power on. So that's our first objective. Find a way to put the power in the rest of the research center and open this vent. We walk to the center of the research center, and notice there are three symbols to this door in front of us. Let's go to these symbols and see if there's some way we can open this door. We'll go to these symbols. They give us a message on a message by telling us that this door can be open, but we first need to find three keys. 
I guarantee you that these three symbols represent where the three keys are. When you go to the right side of the recess center, we know there's two rooms. One that's lit and one that has all the lights off. Let's go to the room that's lit up first. When you go to this door, aka the yellow lab, we get a message that message about telling us that we see a generator in front of us and that we need to put a battery on top of it to have the generator on. Since I've got a battery to our left, let's see what it works. Just like that, power tends to be on in the rest of the research center. Let's go back in the red lab since we have the power on. When we first enter the red lab, we notice two things. We notice the safe with one of the symbols from the big giant door that we saw at the beginning. We notice a red piece of paper with a red spotlight over it. Let's go to the page, piece of paper and see what it gives us. Paper gave us a safe code. Now let's interact with the safe and see what it gives us the key. When we walk up to the safe, we get the first key. That's one out of the three keys that we need to open the dying door. We walk back out to the center of the research center and we look to our left. We notice that the vent is now gone. So now we have a chance to do a little bit more exploring of the rest of the research center. When we first walk through the vent, we notice that there is a symbol on the wall that looks like the symbol that was above the lock or aka the safe that was in red lab. We also see another spotlight sign in this room. I guarantee you the spotlight represents where one of the safe codes are. And there you go. Here go the safe code to the blue lab. Now let's move these crates and see if there's a safe behind it. And it is. So let's get to the second key. When we look inside the green lab, we notice in the distance that there is a safe, safe symbol there as well. Now that we found the safe symbol, all we gotta do is find the safe code. Let's look around this room and see if we find it. Over here, we have another blue spotlight. So you know, like the rest of them, this spotlight means there's a safe code over here. And what do you know? There's the safe code on the floor. Now that we got the final safe code, let's go to the, the safe code the key. Let's go to the door and see if the door open. The door is open, so now we can finally exit the stage. Before we exit, you see there's a book on the ground, and it looks like when we walk up to the book, it tells us that this book has all of the research and lab work that was conducted on this island. Let's grab this book and get out of here. Before we leave the exit, I thank everybody for viewing my walkthrough. Y'all have a nice day.